some opening remarks and then some questions. I appreciate your coverage uh, all spring and today. Okay. As Steve said, thanks to everybody for uh, for being here, covering the, the team. Uh, appreciate that. And then just, you know, start out by congratulating a couple of folks. Uh, first of all, President Wilson, uh, great news on that yesterday. Um, you know, and congratulate everybody involved in that whole process. I'm sure it was uh, very time consuming, but it uh, looks like it's uh, been a great addition to the Hawkeye family. So certainly uh, welcome her to campus. And then, uh, you know, the bas basketball teams both being out there, the men's and women's teams both had tremendous seasons. And uh, really, it's kind of been a department wide thing, just a lot of good things going on with all of our teams, all of our sports. And uh, it was last weekend or two weekends ago, the, you know, the soccer team doing what they did. So just just uh, it's been fun to watch everybody uh, go on and have success. And and also Chauncey uh, being picked last night by the Cowboys, really happy for him. He's a just kind of a prototypical uh, Iowa player in my mind, a guy who came in here probably under-recruited, and uh, boy, he's just kind of done things in a quality fashion. Really from the first day he got here, he's developed as a player, uh, did everything he's supposed to do academically, and then some graduated uh, with ease last uh, December, and uh, just, you know, just a first-class guy. So really happy for him, and hopefully uh, the other guys joining him here today. Uh, I haven't, haven't been following, I'm not sure what time they started, but hopefully it'll be a good day that way, and then also, just want to thank our fans again. Great to be in Kinnick, first and foremost, with live bodies, live people. Uh, appreciate their energy, and uh, I think a little bit I've you know interfaced with folks. So I think everybody's ready to get back to hopefully no more normal times here next uh, next fall. Hopefully, we'll begin. I know we feel that way. I know the officials felt that way. So I'm sure uh, most people do. So you know, it was it was a good day. Uh, I think good day of work and. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be anxious to see the tape really no more after practice, after you look at the tape. But I think overall, it's been a good spring, a productive spring for us. I think the attitude's been good. The effort's been good. So happy about that. I think we're seeing a lot of improvement. And uh, start with the older guys. You know, we're kind of in tears with our football team. Got some guys that played a lot of football. Uh, you think about Leonard Baum on offense. Think about you know, Van Valkenburg, who's he's like 28 now or whatever, however old he is. Uh, but, you know, both those guys out there just really practicing well. But I'd say that about all of our experienced players, I thought they really uh, were working hard, thought they improved. And if we're going to have a good team, that, that's really important. Um, and it's, it's, you know, I can say the same thing about our younger guys, although they were clearly like in a little different tier. And we've kind of got two tiers there. You've got guys that maybe have been in the program, haven't played a lot that, you know, we, we saw some improvement. I can address those guys here in a minute. Uh, and then you got another tier of guys that really haven't hit the field. And beyond that, uh, that, that first week I had a show of hands of guys that have never been through a spring practice, and it's a big number. And that, that I think, really showed the last two weeks. Um, you know, just the, uh, the conditioning level, the, you know, the endurance that it takes to, to really practice hard and practice with quality, uh, the quality kind of work that you have to get. So uh, it's good that they had a chance to experience in that. Uh, you know, you think about our freshman class, Clearly, you know, they didn't go through uh, spring ball because there was, you know, they just got here in June, but uh, they didn't go through a traditional preseason practice last year. So they missed out on that. This is the first time they've really had to kind of push it a little bit. And, and I'd say the same thing about our second guys, you know, missing last spring, missing camp, the second year players. You know, they got a lot of ground to cover too. So the only way to, you know, to get that ground covered, you got to go out and experience and figure out just exactly how far you got to go. And so I think this will be a good, uh, you know, good education for them that way. And then the big thing is to take to, uh, the next phase uh, with the kind of seriousness they need to and, you know, push uh, push the needle a little bit in terms of uh, maturity. But, um, you know, just please, the attitude, I just, I think, you know, we got a lot of room for improvement right now and that that's a good thing. So uh, that part's all good. Uh, I'll ha I'm happy to answer questions about specifics, et cetera, as we go along. I'm sure you got a few of those. And then just kind of in closing, I think, you know, one other thing of note, you know, in college football right now, we're really getting ready to hopefully uh, get back to more normal circumstances football-wise, just like our whole country. Hopefully we're getting closer that way. Um, and I didn't wear a mask out there, and I'm pretty sure I heard the uh, top medical officer this week say you don't have to wear them outdoors. So I, I fully uh, appreciated that. But uh, hopefully we're moving in the right direction. But in college football, you know, let's say football stuff's normal. You know, we're getting ready to enter this uh, this new era of, you know, the transfer portal with free waivers. That's new. And then uh, uh, at least the one-time waiver. And, and really, in reality, they're, they're, you know, waivers are waivers. They're, they're going to be uh, – they've come a little bit more liberally than they used to. And then the other part is going to be NLI. At some point, that's going to start to uh, be part of our lives too. So 
Well, all that being said, this is kind of the time where you know everybody assesses things, we're assessing things, and trying to meet with our players and tell them you know what they need to do moving forward. And I'm sure we'll have some guys at some point every year. You have some guys that decide they're going to you know have other opportunities or whatever. But it's it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out because it is it's a new little bit different landscape than what we're used to. But so again, I think uh, you know it's been a good good spring. Uh, this team's been really good since we started in Jan January. They've done a nice job academically. They've done a nice job off the field. And uh, key thing for us to do right now is close it out next week, last week of final or classes, and then finals the week after. So finish that chapter, you know, finish up in a uh, quality fashion, and then uh, they'll have some time to relax, and we'll turn our, our attention to summer after that. So we'll go from there, do that in June. But that, all that being said, I'll throw it out for questions now. How do you assess uh, your quarterbacks thus far in your 315 practices? Yeah, I think we're moving along, kind of like our whole team. I think we're moving along. Uh, Spencer's not, you know, he's still got room for improvement, and hopefully I'm, I'm saying that, you know, uh, before his last year here too. But uh, yeah, I think he's improving for sure. And I think probably the more notable are the other other guys kind of closing, I don't want to say closing the gap, but moving into the, the field of uh, consideration. And I think uh, both, uh, I think Alex has had, you know, he's finished the second half of spring probably, uh, he's on that upward uh, trajectory right now, and I think Deuce is trying to figure some things out. But we've seen enough from both those guys to to feel good about him, and uh, you know, feel good about Connor too. But uh, there's, you know, it's right now it's uh, Spencer, then those two, and then I think Connor comes behind him. Yeah, good and bad. Uh, you know, our, our experienced guys um, look look good. I mean, uh, you know, Linderbaum, we expected him to. And I, I think he's he's uh, played better than he did last year, which is good. Uh, but a guy, Collar Shot, who played well for us in the past, but I think he's really he's taking things to heart. You know, sometimes the older guys see that window closing a little bit, and they, they uh, understand it's you know time to really get going. And I think he's done a good job. Um, and then I, I mentioned you know we got some guys that have been like in the background, they've been around, but they haven't been playing. But a guy like Nick DeYoung, uh, you know Jack Plum, and even Mason uh, Richmond's only been here two years, but. Those guys made a clear step forward too. So I think a big challenge for us right now is going to, you know, we still got work to do with, with all those guys, but then we're going to have to develop some depth. And we, we don't have much depth on our team, period, like just anywhere. Um, I'm sure there's an exception, but I'm, I'm not sure where that is. So that, that's going to be a real race against time for us. Kirk, yeah. how confident are you right now with Keel? I mean, he doesn't have a oh, yeah. I don't feel great about a lot of things. I feel pretty good about that one. Um, you know, he just he, he could have been a starter the last two years. Like, you know, we've watched that every day in practice. And so it's one thing the way he performs, but it's also the way he's wired mentally. Like he's he's a really you know, mentally tough guy, focused and just so serious. So he's uh come here and just done a great job since the day he got here. And uh yeah, I think we have total confidence. That is one area right now that's kind of representative of our team. I we we do have unlike last year, we got two specialists that are I think are pretty good. And I throw Austin in there too, snapping the ball. You know, want to minimize that. Charlie Jones returning punts. We have guys, four guys that we've seen do it and do it well, do it consistently. But then what's behind those guys? Yeah, and that's that's a real variable right now, a wild card. Although Aaron Blum's already done a nice job uh, kicking the ball. You saw that today. What do you feel you have with Goodson? With Goodson, uh, you know, really really happy with him, and I, I include him in that veteran group, the guys that have played and played well. Obviously, he is a veteran. He's going to his third year. But, you know, he's practiced every day with a great attitude, works hard. Tyrone Tracy, the same thing, until he uh, twisted his ankle. But um, the guys that we think are really quality players that have proven themselves as quality players, they, they've had great attitude all the way through spring. And, um, you know, that sounds mundane. It sounds routine. But, you know, you don't always see that, especially with older guys. Sometimes they think, you know, it's, it's uh, spring break instead of spring practice. And they've, they've gone out and shown the other guys, like, this is the temple you're supposed to work at. And the other guys are chasing them. And... You know, two or you got two young backs. You know, talk about that second tier. Uh, both Gavin and Leishon have been. You know, we've we've been really pleased with what we've seen. You know, Ivory's out, so that that's a position where we might have some depth. Uh, we probably do, but there aren't many of them on our team right now. Yeah, one thing I'd mention about Riley. Start with him. Uh, in, in the spirit of Jovan Johnson, who's here today, he got here yesterday. Uh, Joe Vaughn, from the day he walked in, two, two things he did. He was talking from the time we started recruiting him, like he was talking, positive talk, but he was always chattering, you know, and talking. Uh, he has a good spirit to him, good life. 
And the other thing, once we started practicing, he had a knack. It seemed like he got his hands on a ball every day at practice. And that, again, it sounds kind of, but he's a defensive back, right? That doesn't always happen. And uh, Riley's kind of had that kind of spring. He, he made uh, two plays, not this week, but the week before in one practice, you know, when balls were bat getting batted around, somehow he came out, out with two of them in the same practice uh, or fighting for a, a ball with another guy, an offensive guy. And then today, you know, made a nice play. So he's, he's really had a good spring. And I'd include him in that veteran group of guys that we we know he can play winning football for us. And uh, But he's taking it, you know, he's taking this the way you hope he would. And uh, I think all of our older guys have really set a good good example for younger guys. And then our defense overall, you know, they, they've been okay. And they, you know, they it's 15 days into it. And it's like camp, you know, the, the by 15, by usually by day eight, they know the offense better than the offensive team does. So... You know, but that that's their job. Like that's what you're supposed to do on defense. I'm not criticizing them, but you know, they start running our plays before we do it. Before, you know, we're breaking the huddle. They already know it's coming. You mentioned Chad and the yeah. description. But what kind of adjustments can make to spring? And obviously, it's still early. You guys do much, but what kind of factor can you give you guys to fall? You know, you never want anybody injured. Um, but the fact that Ivory couldn't practice, you know, that opened the door for both those guys. And you know, we all feel like we know Ivory. You know, we're just we want him to get healthy right now, so he can be full speed here in August. Uh, but but those two, two we, we've really liked everything about Gavin. He was an early entry a year ago, uh, but didn't get to go through spring ball. Right? March 13th, the curtain came down. So uh, this has been really good for him, and it's been good for us to see him. And uh, the first thing that comes to mind with him is his attitude. He's a really serious. Uh, he's a football-minded guy. And you know, I just talked about Chauncey's attributes. I, I you know. Gavin was more highly recruited, but um, he's just one of those guys that there's no maintenance, you know, ever academically, football-wise. He just does what he's supposed to do, and he does it in a really quality fashion. So we feel really good about him. And then LaShawn um, was feeling his way in the fall. We didn't have camp, so, you know, there's a lot of scout team work there and all that kind of thing. And then in the out-of-season program in shorts, he's, you know, he's okay. He's, he's a good – when he has pads on, he's a lot more impressive. He's a, he's a football player. He's not a – uh, you know, a combine uh, warrior, one of those guys. So, you know, in our defensive guys feel the same way. Like, you know, if you got to tackle him, it's a little different. And I'm not saying he's LaShawn Daniels, but he's similar to LaShawn and there's a real physical presence to his play. And he's, he's a great young man too. And this has been really good for him to get a lot of work and um, repetition. And, you know, Liddell's done a really nice job with that group. He's, you know, he's been excellent. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's doing great. Everything's right, right on the money. Yep, right on the money. So, you know, it's all about you deal with the circumstances in front of you. Last year, I mean, big, big jump from last year, right? Because there were no circumstances, there was no practice, so big jump there. Um, you know, so. The, the only negative I see right now is we had a lot of guys out and an inordinate amount of injuries, right? And that uh, we didn't experience that in the fall. Uh, a lot of that's kind of like getting COVID or not getting COVID. There's some luck involved too, I think, in, in all this stuff. And uh, we're, we have not been lucky that way. We've had some guys with like just, you know, freakish, flukish stuff. I'll name one of the guys, but one of our younger guys, walk on, uh, you know, just doing a routine drill, got a Liz Frank uh, injury on his foot, which, you know, you might as well. It's not good. It's like nine, ten months. So uh, there's nothing dramatic. None of our injuries have been the result of dramatic drama out there. It's just you know those things happen sometimes. So, but the, the good news there is that it gives other guys opportunity, more opportunity to work. But you know the good, you know hopefully we'll have all those guys back. That's that's been really the only kind of you know I won't call it frustrating, but it's just been it is what it is. Um, kudos to to Matt Fagan and uh, uh, Louis Steck. They were the Ironmen of the spring. They allowed our lines to continue because we were getting thin on both lines. And I, I don't think those guys missed barely anything. So they enabled us to go, and you appreciate that. And they're both tough, competitive kids. But no, I, th I think it's all about, you know, it's I've always said we're not trying to get game ready right now. We're not trying to put a team together. We're just trying to get guys to move forward. And I think the guys that were able to work did that. And then, you know, the guys that weren't able to work are going to have to catch up. It'll be easier for some than others, you know. So. But it's 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 just good to be practicing. We we didn't do a pie throwing, you know, pie in the sky or a pie in the face contest today or anything like that. Maybe with the NCAA rules that are about to come out, we may end up doing that in August because I'm not sure we're gonna be a lot of practice. Uh so we'll have time for those kinds of things. But um, you know, we figure we better just keep working because we got some work to do. Is there a I'm sorry.
I'll come back. Your defensive line right now. I think four out of your eight guys you put on your spring depth chart have been out. Or, yeah. Uh, that's, and especially considering he's probably going to go to the assignment interval too today. That's got to be troubling to you. How, how, what's their progress like? And then on the second part of that is Lucas Van Ness seems to have really kind of jumped and made some plays. But we, He's made them all spring. He's he's been really going at a high pace. And uh, I talked a year ago, uh, or last year in the fall, I guess it would have been. Um, feels like a year ago. Uh, just about what a jump he and, and Davion had made from 19, right? I mean, those guys were playing a whole different level uh, than the year prior. And and uh, Zach has continued to accelerate. Like, he's on that pace. So, uh, and it just kind of fits into that that same old story I give you about like our good guys have to be getting better, and he's he's definitely done that. And it also seems like every spring when we go out there, not last spring, but uh, every spring we go out there. Okay, how are we going to replace these three guys that we've just graduated? They're pretty good. And then by the end of spring, you feel better about things. And that that second tier of guys talked about the offensive linemen. You think about uh, John Wagner. You think about Noah Shannon. Uh, the work that those guys have done. Uh, and then Joe Evans has really been, you know, to me, he's, he's been a good player, but he's really developing into a, a total player, if you will. So uh, those things make you feel good because we're making that progress. And then the guys that aren't out, we've had guys in and out. Some of the guys that work today have missed probably half a spring ball. So those are, you know, they're going to have to try to close that gap here between now and September. Uh, but I, I, I really, I think we feel good about the group overall. It's a really young group. Uh, but we see a lot of potential and a lot of, a lot of good – you know, guys, guys have good motors. So I think we, we can get that done if we just keep them on the field and keep them getting better. Kurt, we're all uh, questioning, you know, what's going on on the defensive line and the linebacker core. How nice is that to have a, a secondary that's so experienced that can anchor a defense a little bit and, you know, be able to have a scenario where you are a little more experienced? Yeah, I don't want to get celebratory, you know, start celebrating things or whatever, but I almost kind of feel right now as I stand here we have – probably six starters in the defensive backfield. And that's probably a good thing since we play a lot of 5DB stuff now, uh, even though we call it cash. But, um, you know, I feel like we've seen a lot of growth there. Uh, Kayvon Merriweather, if you want to talk about those guys that maybe haven't played a lot, Kayvon's really uh, – and he's emerged as a leader too, not just a good player, but as a leader. He's playing with confidence now. Uh, he was kind of a project when we, we uh, recruited him. You know, he's a better basketball player probably. And um, – but I think he's really hit full stride. Um, Notch below, Quinn Schulte uh, has, has done a nice job back there. Sebastian Castro has done a nice job. Then the corner position, we feel pretty good about Terry Roberts, the way he's grown. You guys all saw it starting to happen on special teams last year. We didn't have a better special teams player, and I think that's carried over the defense, and we feel good about Hankins, too, with Riley. So uh, Jamari Harris is coming along. So I, th I think we're, you know, we're developing some depth there. And then one of the guys I mentioned, talking about those guys, that you know we, we kind of knew we have with Campbell and Benson. Uh, Justin Jacobs has made – Huge improvement in 15 days. You know, he needed this work so badly. It's always been a good prospect, but boy, he's, he's turned into a pretty good player right now. And he's developing some confidence too because he's out there working. And that's, those, those are the good things you see in the spring. So that's, that's what you're hoping to, all these little individual stories that, you know, hopefully will come together here in August. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, love to. We're not going to talk about cup blocking, so let's talk about. I've given up on that. Okay, I got the white flag. I, I normally don't surrender in life, but I, I pretty much surrendered on that one, because there's just a total climate of apathy on that that topic. So, outside of two people. Yeah, you know. So since we're on that topic, it, it got me a little bit curious, and I'm I'm not a stat guy or a detail guy necessarily all the time. I just kind of go by how things feel what I'm seeing, you know, and think about stuff. Um, so it, it, it did pique my curiosity. I went back and asked our training staff, asked Cammy, I said, you know, how many, how many concussions have we had the last five years? Just out of curiosity, because it sounds like it's a national crisis right now. I thought we just kind of were coming out of one. Uh, so I guess this one's going down. we got to create one. Um, you know, we've had an average of 1.5. I don't know if that's like, what's it? Is it herp or FERP or whatever it is? I'm, I'm probably violating some act right now, but... Uh, we've had 1.5 over the last, we've had three one year in preseason. Uh, we've had two and one, and we've had one, one and one. We've had none this, this camp unless I walk in there and find out. Somebody had one today, which I just saw Cammie a minute ago. She said we're clean. Uh, so we haven't had one this spring. 
Football is a it's a risky game. Anybody that's ever played it, you know, figures that out pretty fast. Anybody that watches it and pays attention. Uh, when I work construction in the summer times, the guys that were up on the beams they got paid a lot more than the guys on the ground because they're walking on beams and they're you know they're they're at risk. Um, but I, my fear is I, it almost seems like we're creating a. Uh, I don't think we're an outlier. I think we're almost trying to create a story here. I also think since I'm talking right, which I am. Um, you know, we, we tend to be a copycat to the NFL. Whatever they do, we do, and which is fine, but, but we're not the NFL. We don't play preseason games. Um, you know, we have to develop players. We have to do that. Most college teams do. There are some that don't, but we have to do that, and you have to practice to develop players. So I'm just – I'm a little concerned, and then it all, it all starts with, you know, you can only learn to play football by playing football, and – uh, what would have made more sense to me, and again, I'm not a medical expert, but I can go back 20 years ago. We were having a lot more concussions. The equipment wasn't as good. There was no protocol for treatment. The whole world has changed so much. And the single biggest thing you can do to make camps safer, preseason safer, is create more space in between. So I think, you know, not that I'm a big SEC guy, but they had the right idea of 35 for 25. And I, I would argue maybe 32 is probably enough, but to give more space, because when we did shift to one a day, that was my first observation it's almost impossible to sanely have 25 practices in 29 days. We're, we're going to have a tired team in that first ball game if we follow that theory. So we didn't. And, you know, what would make more sense is give guys more time away, let them breathe a little bit, and recover. You know, that, that's, that's the key to keeping people healthy. Uh, and then the other thing that's changed is, again, we, the equipment is so much better. Our guys are wearing custom helmets. Uh, the protocol is, is going to make a world of difference. And I think the data on concussions and concussion studies – uh, after, you know, the protocol era began, you know, you got to go down 10 years or whatever it takes to get good data. Um, yeah, then it's going to be a little bit more of a significant conversation. But right now, I think we're throwing darts. That's me personally. I'm not a medical expert. Don't plan to be or certainly pretend to be. But I, I just, I'm concerned about that. It just, you know, you start making rules that um, or policies that are just kind of like founded on whatever. It just it concerns me. That, I think that's, a, that's the first thought I had two years ago when the NFL talked about doing that. I get the bull in the ring stuff. That's a stupid drill. Like anybody does that, I'm okay if our opponents do it because you got a good chance of screwing your team up, right? So, but it just, uh, like I think that went out uh, whatever year in the 70s, maybe, meet on the hoof. Anybody read that book? Okay. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you, you got part of playing football, you got to learn how to take a hit and deliver a hit safely. And there's, there's technique and, all that involved. And a lot of times with injuries, you go back and see that as being an issue. And then a lot of times it's just freak. It's luck. Like, I mean, I, the last knee, I can't remember a, a knee injury. In the old days, it was guys falling on each other. I can't remember a knee injury now where it's, just, it's more of a pivot or a plant, you know. But it, uh, there's risk in doing what we do. We all know that. And, and all of us that did play that don't play now, we're all dumb enough we'd probably sign up here. At least most of us would sign up again for it. So. One or two more. Yep. First of all, Tyrone's I alluded to was really doing well until he got hurt. So that's, that's where it all starts for us. Uh, Charlie has you know been a good punt returner for us, and now kind of like Terry Roberts, you know we really hope that uh, transitions into him being an every down guy. And, and we're optimistic based on what he's done thus far. Um, Nico's out, and he's a guy we got a lot of confidence in. Um, and then at that other uh, you know the other spot right now, it's a it's a jump ball, and that's really. Uh, we've got guys that have the potential to do it right now. Uh, we talk about a guy like uh, Ritter. We talk about a guy like Hudson. Um, but they've, they've got to they've got to keep moving. You know, they've got they've got to do better because uh, they're not at that level yet. And not that Keegan Johnson is, but we've uh, given him some reps out there because we feel like he's kind of on equal footing with those guys right now. And really, it's uh, who can do the best between now and September. And then Arlen Bruce is a guy that just you know he's kind of impressed us with the way he's done things. So. Uh, we've given him a lot of work too. So if the door's open, you know, go in, go in there and do something with it. And then Max, Max has been hurt a lot the last couple of years. So he's had 15 good days right now. And I think he's taken advantage of those repetitions and he's done a lot of good things too. So we've, we've developed confidence in him. So it's, it's kind of an open book right now. And that'll be one when we 
meet in late August, you know, it'll probably be interesting to see where we're at. I, I couldn't even predict it at this point. Yeah. Kirk, when you look at, again, kind of a quarterback, in what ways have, did you see growth from Spencer? Because last year, he was inaccurate at times. Uh, <coughs> he was good when, when he was fairly decisive right off the snap, yep. but he was less good when that was yep. the case. What have you seen that he's made strides in those areas? Probably the two biggest things that come to mind, and we, you know, we talk about all the time, just be, you know, the accuracy element, um, not only completions, but in a perfect world, you know, throw the ball where a guy can run with it too, on top of it, not just, you know, make a uh, circus catch and end up on the ground. Uh, and then the, the other thing is just, I think, just processing things faster. You know, you never, you never go fast enough as a quarterback, and if you play till you're 35, it's probably the case. You just, you know, the faster you can process and make decisions, uh, that that's and they got to be good decisions, obviously, but. I think that's that's the race those guys run all the time. It just it's it never ends, so it's a challenge. And then you know, being cohesive too helps. You know, having good protection and guys running the right routes and running them you know the way they need to and all those kinds of things. But um, you know, a lot goes into the passing game. But I think overall, you know, this this has been really good for him because it's been 15 days of just you know fundamental work, fundamental work, and that's that's so important for all these guys. Time for one more. Yeah, let me start with Luca. You know, I, I don't know anything about basketball, really. Uh, I'm a casual fan, and um, I don't pretend to be an expert on Luca either, other, other than a guy as a casual fan watching the, the program and watching them compete. It's been fun to watch him because uh, I, I really took to him back as a, when he's a freshman, sophomore. He's a guy just, you know, played hard, had good energy, and just like, you know, you could tell it was really important to this guy the way he played. And then the other thing, just, you know, casual fan watching, the, the jump that he made, and I think it was year two to three, uh, where, like, you know, you can just tell this guy's been working, 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 and it sounds like his dad's been a big part of that. Uh, just reading, I had a chance to shake his hand today. It was nice. But, uh, um, you know, the work that he's put in, just it's paid off so beautifully for him. And you think about the awards that he's won, and that's amazing. It's mind-boggling. You think about, you know, you got Caitlin out there, right, as a true freshman, what she did as a true freshman. Luca with all the awards, uh, basically the Heisman winner of college basketball. And then, you know, two weeks ago we had the Heisman Award of uh, wrestling. Um, you know, so it's great for our team and our program to witness these, these other athletes in our programs, right, that are doing great things. But I, going back to Luca, to me, it's just like, you know, this guy has just worked his way and willed his way into being a, a really, you know, great college basketball player. And that's, you know, that's what sports are about. That's the fun part about sports is seeing that kind of growth and, uh, improvement and you know I just go back to his first two years uh, he just seemed like a guy that had great determination and will so you know you wonder you know it's not a mystery how guys get good you got to have some requisite ability I understand that but that that's how it goes and uh, then, yeah then having a chance to, to I've never technically coached my three kids you know but uh, to be in the same building be on the same field watch them on practice film things like that uh, you know, I feel like I've stole time like you know we miss a lot in coaching uh, is you know because we're away from our families a lot, and then they grow up, and uh, you don't get those those years back. You don't get that time back. But to you know, still four or five years in their case, uh, five years with all of them. Uh, you know, it's just been you know it's one of the things that's really made this a special experience for me. That's on a personal note, you know. But I mean, it just uh, it's really made it gratifying, and uh, I feel like I've been very fortunate. You know, so I feel feel great there. Wish my daughters played bass or football, but I'm glad they don't. <laughs> I'm really glad they don't. But anyway.